hands together for the musicians on the stand. When I grow up, I want to be like them. This is the best of Jamaica, the best that Jamaica has to offer. One more time. Come and clap them. You have the young ones and not so young, those who are here to guide them. Yes, I see some people from the, the let me tell you, enough people gather here, you know. And then we have people like Stephen Woodham in the gathering. Stephen! Big up Stephen. And we have one of my friends, enough JDF people there here, too, you know. Watch, Sean. Go on, my brother. You're not playing this evening. You just enjoy the music. You get to it. All right, friends. This first piece is called Festivities. I'm going to read it because what has been written is very important. Andrew, I did not acknowledge you. Could we acknowledge Andrew Ho, please? The chairman. Notice he's sitting on a chair. That's a chairman. Oh, God, did you want to call They might have charged you. Anyway, I'm going to read because I think they have to... Look, Origio, is you that? This guy and I worked at JBC 4,000 years ago. Leo Origio. <laughs> yes, let me tell you. I'm going to read what they have written because it's important that I put it together the way they wrote it. So, Andrew Marshall was born in 1982 and he has been doing some magnificent work. If you've been listening to the Philharmonic Orchestra of Jamaica, you'd have been exposed to his work. Really great work. We're going to have festivities, first off, from Run A Boat Symphony. You hear the name of the symphony? Run A Boat. Could be, what could be more Jamaican than that? Written in 2009, it was composed originally for traditional orchestral forces with a novel introduction of the steel pan section to highlight the music's connection to its Caribbean roots. The first movement, festivities, sets the impetus for the entire symphony, which celebrates good times and gatherings among friends. And that's what we're doing, celebrating good times and gatherings. Clap, clap yourself. The movement is largely spirited and rhythmic throughout in its attempt to capture the vibrancy that characterizes the Jamaican people around a pot of food on an open fire. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to run the boat here now. Festivities, let's hear it. I was wondering if the conductor wasn't going up there. No, that gentleman is Mr. Franklin Halliburton. If you've never seen him in action, see him this evening, this afternoon. He's part of the performance.
Well, well, well. From your applause, I recognize you love that. The woman will just like to go somewhere around the camera on a boat, not true. Now listen to me. After coach, I'll read this to you. The first time I saw this piece you're about to hear, goosebumps wash me. This is a Naya Bingy symphony. Andrew Marshall. Born in 1982. Young man, you know, went to Northern Caribbean University. I don't even know if it was NC at the time or it was West Indies College. Anyway, brilliant music musician and then went overseas and has been professor in music at universities overseas. Now, the work was specifically written for the Philharmonic Orchestra of Jamaica shortly after its establishment in 2013. It was premiered at the 2014 spring concert season and is arguably Dr. Marshall's finest orchestral work to date. He sought to embody nationalistic elements in the work and chose the Naya Bingi rhythm as the foundation of the symphony. Wait till you hear it. The symphony depicts various aspects of the history and moods of the nation and includes a movement based on the right excellent Marcus Mazzaia Garvey's poem, Africa Love, with the finale, a rousing revival hymn composed for chorus with Zion Land. Processional, the first movement establishes the Nabingi rhythm in a steady, unhurried fashion. You can hear the drums, right? In its opening bars and continues it throughout the movement while the main theme of the symphony is introduced and developed. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Andrew Marshall's Nabingi Symphony, the Philharmonic Orchestra of Jamaica will now deliver.
And you could see the men and women of the Rastafarian movement, the Nyabindi, walking their robes and beating those drums. There's a gentleman with us this afternoon who has served this country in such an outstanding way as an educator. He's been brought to my attention and I must acknowledge him. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Alfred Sandster. Thank you so much. Former president of the University of Technology, but even before it was UTEC. Only Leif Nelson, you know the work that this man has done. I hope you have some of his writings and his publication. Oh my goodness, he's looking so fabulous. You must be his son. You look like him. I'm telling you, you're not in son. You're not in son. Don't, my mother would say, don't fib. Uh, 94. He's 94? Wow, clap him again. He's 94. Oh, Dr. Sansa, thank you so much for your service to this country in science and technology and just by being a good exemplary human being. You understand? Wonderful. Let's move along. You're coming to one of your compositions now. Do you mind? Yeah? My time to do so. Franklin, Franklin Halliburton. You want to hear from, about him and from him? Yeah? Did you, did you see the University Singers in Concert in December? You saw him helping us take off the roof and take out the, 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 the bricks that then carry from Trelawney to make the chapter of Dewey. Every brick from that, from in that chapter come from Trelawney, you know. Every brick come from Trelawney and was reassembled to make that chapter of the University of the West Indies. But we are right here today in the bandstand that so many people have memories of. So, Anna Maria. <laughs> I was trying to make him younger than he is, or rather the information I have. Anyway, this gentleman has done outstanding work in music in this country. And, you know, frankly, sometimes I hear people say it, or I read what is written to say, after Noel Dexter, they didn't know what would have happened with the University Singers. But man, you have carried that baton. And we are so proud of you. So Franklin Halliburton, conductor of the orchestra and music director of the acclaimed University Singers, composed this piece for orchestra and chorus based on the traditional Catholic, Catholic prayer, but he's reimagined it with a Caribbean framework. The congas will feature prominently throughout the piece and the driving and pulsating energy of the culture will be evident. Could you welcome Mr. Franklin Halliburton's piece, Ave Maria.
I think we're having too much of a good time. I'm going to be coming around and collecting now. <laughs> now, Paulette Bellamy is a doyen in the country's music fraternity. I am certain you agree with that. Or like young Williams here was trained by her, and for him, father John was trained by her, and I never met it. All right. <laughs> now, she played the violin in Sipto Beckett's Jamaica Philharmonic Symphony Orchestra in the 1960s. She co-founded the Asher Performing Arts Company in 1993 and was a musical director for the 2003 movie One Love, starring Idris Elba, Kimani Marley, and Shireen Anderson. She's taught piano and violin to countless students over the many, many years. In 2009, Paulette received the Order of Distinction from the Government of Jamaica in recognition for her dedicated and valuable contribution to the field of music. Now, Jakasa John Panbre is a popular and well-loved Jamaican folk song. And by the way, it's not easy if it's Jakasa, it's easy, you know. You know, say too much of them around the place at all. And when you see them, they're very expensive. So this is a treat for you. So Jakasa John Panbre is a popular and well-loved Jamaican folk song, and she's arranged this work for orchestra with her signature style of playful melodies and syncopations, and infused it with her infectious joie de vivre. So we are talking French now. Enjoy Jakasa John Panbre.
really fabulous creation, Jackass, a jump and brain. What's another name that we call donkeys in Jamaica away from Jackass? No, seriously, we don't know. I'm not, no, I won't even tell them what you said because that's such a big embarrassment. Oh my gosh, it couldn't be a mule, oh God. What's another name? Beast of Burden. That's why you always hang out with some of your older friends.